Hi all, today we can discuss Who's Imagined Community by Partha Chatterjee. Who's Imagined Community by Partha Chatterjee. Before entering to Who's Imagined Community, let us uh, know about the concept of Imagined Community. What is actually the concept of Imagined Community? An imagined community is a concept developed by Benedict Anderson. Imagined community is a concept developed by Benedict Anderson. Benedict Anderson was an Anglo-Irish political scientist and historian. Anderson is best known for his 1983 book Imagined Community that explored the origin of nationalism. In the book Imagined Communities, Anderson detailed, detailed the concept of uh, what is imagined community. So Imagined Communities is a book that we know that introduces a popular concept in political science and sociology that of imagined communities named after. That book is widely considered an influential in social science. According to Benedict Anderson, nation is a socially constructed community that's imagined by the people who perceive themselves as a part of that group. A nation is a socially constructed community. That is imagined by the people who perceive themselves as a part of that group. Anderson focuses on the way in which media creates imagined community. So imagined community is actually a creation of media. Specifically the power of print media. That shaped an individual's social psyche. Anderson analyzes. Anderson's and Anderson analyzes the written word, a tool used by church authors and media companies, that is notably books, newspaper and magazine, as well as the government tool of the map, the census and the museum. These tools were all built to target and define a mass audience in the public sphere through dominant images, uh, through ideologies and language. So Anderson explores the racist and colonial origins of these practices before explaining a general theory that explains how contemporary government and corporations that explains how contemporary governments and corporations can utilize these same practices. These theories were not originally applied to the internet or television. Anderson already defined Nation as an imagined political community. A nation is imagined because the member of a nation a nation is imagined because the members of even the smallest nation will never know most of their uh, fellow members. They never meet each other or even they uh, they are not hearing from uh, hear, uh, hear of their or even hear of them. Yet in the minds of each lives, the image of their communion. Members of that community probably will never, members of, in a, uh, members of a community probably will never know each other, other members face to face. However, we, we believe that they may have similar interest or identity as a part of the same nation. So a people, uh, a group of people who live in a nation, may not have any connection they may not see each other even in their lifetime not regularly at least even in their lifetime even though they may feel they may believe one thing that they there are something common among them that's why the concept of nationalism uh, is present there so they may they they think that the people may have uh, similar interest probably have similar interest or identity as a part of the same nation members hold their minds 
a mental image of their affinity. For example, the nation who felt with other members of your own nation. When your imaginary community participates in a larger event such as Olympic Games or in a war like activities. So whenever there is an Olympic game, every part of a nation, people from every part of a nation have a common feel that we belong to a particular nation, particular country like that. So what is <coughs> what is in a nutshell is that nationalism is actually there is nothing rather than an imagined uh, feel or imagined community a nation is not existing anywhere but there we can see only an imagined community so what is later uh, known as a nation is actually uh, an imagined community because the boundaries are imagined because uh, the categorization is actually based on an imagination. So everything occurs in a place that is not uh, not physically present anywhere that only existing in the mind of the people. So the concept of nation has its space only uh, in the minds of the people. Back to whose imagined community by Partha Chatterjee. Let's have a, a summary of whose imagined community now. Whose imagined community is also whose imagined community included in the book titled in the nation and its fragments, colonial and post-colonial histories that was published in 1993. Partha Chatterjee analyzes one thing that the miscarriage of nationalism in the post-colonial states during 1970s. He, she starts with uh, that concept. Uh, the miscarriage of nationalism in the post-colonial states during 1970s. So nationalism is uh, for nationalism as the miscarriage or what we can call nationalism has been has not been managed properly it was an incom incompetent management of nationalism in uh, post colonial countries during 1970s that is what the miscarriage stands for by distressing ethnic politics as well as a corrupt fractious and often brutal regimes hope you got the point uh, so by distracting ethnic politics, so uh, rather than becoming a nation, we ourselves had many uh, ethnic politics. Since uh, the country like India is a country with uh, lots of ethnic groups, people who belong to different culture and different social practices, different political practices. So uh, ethnic politics as well as corrupt, fractious and often brutal regime with these fractious means what irritable and quarrelsome concept difficult to control uh, the particular ethnic group ethnic politics so every ethnic politic ethnic group activities has tarnished the uh, legacy of nationalism by 1970s we know that uh, in 1940s or during uh, independence 1947-1950s India was a country with a great concept a great spirit of nationalism right but now nowadays nationalism is seen as a problem right and has consequently been made a subject of general debate that is why uh, that is what uh, Partha Chatterjee talks about in this work whose imagined community whose imagined community where is nationalism what is nationalism and if it is nationalism and if if it is there as a nation that's whose whose imagined community so nationalism has been a social problem or it has it is considered as a problem in the sense you know that uh, it has been subjected to many general debate 
This recent genealogy of idea explains why nationalism is now viewed as a dark, elemental, unpredictable force of primordial nature threatening the orderly calm of civilized life. Recent genealogy, genealogy, genealogy is the, uh, it is based on the account of a descent of a person, person's descent like a family, a group from ancestors, older people, that is what genealogy. This recent genealogy has the idea uh, of the idea that explains why nationalism is now viewed as dark. Why? Why this nationalism is now considered as a dark? It was one of the most important concepts uh, existed, prevailed in the world. Uh, especially the country like India. But now it has been uh, viewed as a dark one. Elemental, unpredictable force of primordial nature. Threatening the orderly calm of civilized life. So nowadays nationalism is always threatening the uh, actual calm of a civilized life. So civilized life and nationalism. Those, <coughs> these never come together. Civilized life and nationalism. So whether, uh, which one is needed or whether we need nationalism in a civilized life or if it is possible to have a civilized life in the practice of nationalism. That's what the question we have. So nowadays we know one thing that uh, this concept of nationalism, it, uh, it threatens the orderly calm of a civilized life. So civilized, and national, civilized life and nationalism will never uh, go together. In this time, colonial historians have been debating what had become the idea and who was responsible for it. Who is responsible for the concept of the decline of the concept of nationalism. It is from these debates that emerged Benedict Anderson's subtle and original observation that nations were not the determinate uh, products of given sociological conditions such as languages or race or religion but they had been in Europe and everywhere else in the world imagined into existence. So what is proven now, what is shown now, what is explained now is that nations were not the determinate products of given sociological conditions such as language, race or religion. These are the elements <coughs> constituted or these are the elements uh, taken to the formation of a nation generally we we may believe that a nation is formed because of a particular culture particular language particular religion <laughs> that was in the beginning <clears throat> like uh, in uh, western uh, like europe and other countries uh, uh, europe and other uh, european countries it uh, originated in european countries in Europe and everywhere else in the world imagined into existence in the beginning. So wherever we could find a nation that we may have a common uh, belief that a nation is originated as a part of a common language, common race or culture. But the concept of imagined community uh, shows us one thing that nation is not originated in this space. It's actually nation is originated only as in uh, nation is actually originated only in the mind of the people. That's why a nation is an imagined one rather than a strict, rather than a what we can call a proper classification, a concept which has a proper border and limit. Rather than all, it is only an imagined concept uh, of the communities. So, nationalism is an nation is an imagined community there is nothing rather than an imagined one this imagined community took a concrete shape through amongst others the institutions of print capitalism that is that was the nexus of technology of printing press and the economy of the capitalist market nexus of connection of economy of the capitalist market and uh, the science that is what technology print technology so, printed technology and 
capitalism print capitalism that we can call print capitalism print capitalism and print technology sorry print technology lead to print capitalism and nation is a product of print capitalism then what is uh, print capitalism print capitalism is actually a theory underlying the concept of a nation print capitalism uh, is the uh, theory underlying the concept of a nation means a nation is also uh, or nation is originated there is a theory existing that there is a theory that shows that nation is derived from print capitalism print capitalism was one of the uh, most important reasons for the formation of a nation how as a group that forms imagined community so print capitalism forms imagined communities and that imagined communities are the nation so nation can be uh, when uh, when when we go through the concept of a nation we could identify one thing that nation has been uh, nation a nation has been taken nation has been actually form formulated by the concept of uh, print capitalism print capitalism capitalism led to imagined communities and that imagined community is the nation that imagined community is the nation so print capitalism is a theory uh, that is uh, underlying the concept of a theory underlying the concept of a nation nation as a group that forms imagined community that em emerges within a common language and discourse that is generated from the use of the printing press so nationalism came after printing press and printing press is uh, developed as the concept uh, print, uh, there is the help of there is a help actually not the help uh, print capitalism was the reason for uh, nash formation of nation so print capitalism means but uh, the capitalist concept capitalist ideology prevailed in the development of printing press development of printing press means development of uh, the publications so what kind of books published more what kind of books circulated more that is based on the capitalist ideology so what kind of uh, capitalism applied to that the development of printing technology that uh, that kind of nationalism will be uh, originated more so this uh, capitalism sorry uh, nation is also proliferated by a capitalist marketplace capitalist entrepreneurs printed their books and their media in the vernacular vernacular languages in order to maximize circulation as a result readers speaking various local dialects became also able to understand each other and a common discourse emerged anderson argued that the first european nation states were thus formed around their national print language so after a print language after the formation of a print language that we know that though we uh, consider english as an international language but in the beginning it, english was not an international language english is the language of uh, britain right english is the language of england and even in, we think about english there uh, that was not a standardized one there were different vernacular languages or different dialects of england so and the queen's english became a standardized one though there was the the dialect of southampton uh, dialect of southampton became a standardized english what may be the reason for that the capitalist ideology so the print capitalist ideology i hope you understand the point that means uh, capitalist entrepreneurs printed their books and media because they have more money to print their book and idea so what kind of books and ideas were printed published in the beginning that spread the circulation and to maximize the circulation they st they introduced the books in vernacular languages too though it was in vernacular language the ideology that was spread was a centralized one as a result readers speaking various local dialects became able to understand each other that's why readers uh, who 
who were speaking different dialect uh, came to know each other. In the case of Kerala, what can we see? In Kerala, uh, the Kottayam Malayalam is not similar to uh, Kasaragod Malayalam. But the people of Kottayam and Kasaragod familiar, they became familiar only after the books, uh, after the publication of, of the books that is, that is available in Malayalam, a standardized Malayalam, right. That is what happened in the case of all kind of uh, the formation of nationalism. As a result, readers speaking various local dialects became able to understand each other. And uh, common discourses emerged, common thoughts, common knowledge discourses emerged around the world. Common discourses uh, around, uh, emerged around the world. Anderson argued that the first European nation states were thus formed around their national print language. So every state, states led to nation. So every European nation or states were thus formed around their national print languages. In this time, colonial historians, colonial historians have been debating what had become of the idea and who was responsible for for it, uh, for the formation of this nation, concept of nation. It's from these debates that emerged Benedict Anderson's uh, subtle and original observation that nations were not determined, determinate product of given sociological condition, such as language or race or religion. We have already discussed that in Europe and everywhere else in the world. The imagined community took cons concrete shape through, amongst others, the institution of print capitalism, we have already said. The nexus of technology of printing, press and economy of the capitalist market, which made it possible for rapidly growing numbers of people to think about themselves and to relate themselves to others in profoundly new ways. The historical experience of nationalism is in the West had then supplied modular forms from which nationalist Elites in Asia and Africa had chosen the ones they liked. So, uh, to Asia and Africa, uh, where most of the, most of the parts of these countries were uh, belonging to Commonwealth nations, uh, post-colonial uh, colonization was there. So, uh, these nations were also modeling the historical experiences of this kind of imagined communities of West. That's what happened. That's why uh, this kind of nationalism came to the continents like uh, Asia and Africa from Western countries. No surprise then that the search was on so to speak for a, for a new way of liking fraternity, power and time meaningfully together. Nothing perhaps more precipitated this search nor made it more fruitful. The print capitalism which made it possible for rapidly growing numbers of people to think about themselves. So what made the people to think as a group, uh, to think about themselves is because of uh, that print capitalism. And to relate themselves to others. Otherwise people may not be thinking about larger than a group of uh, uh, only uh, people uh, that is uh, very less in number. So this kind of a community, uh, this formation uh, happened after the print capitalism. And to relate, that's why people started to relate themselves to others. Uh, that's why people, or people, uh, for example, people of India uh, from Kerala uh, to Kashmir, when we think about uh, Tamil Nadu to Kashmir, there, there we can't find any similarity in thought, appearance, culture, food, uh, posture, uh, I mean... Uh, health whatever it is physical features some something is variant uh, that's even though we may feel as a unity we may feel as a community that is because of this concept of nationalism and this happened only after we started relating relating each other first of all relating themselves and uh, relating uh, themselves to others this happened after the print capitalism the key to situating official nationalism will the merger of nation and dynastic empire is to remember that it developed after and in reaction to the popular national movement proliferating in Europe since uh, 1820s. That's what we needed to think about as an another thing. We may believe one thing that this nationalism uh, is having 
having the tradition of uh, thousands of years or something we may feel that but actually it started the concept of nationalism state and nation nationalism started only in 1820s in europe if this nationalism were modeled on america and french histories so now they became modular in turn in term it was only uh, that a certain inventive legal domain was required to permit the empire to appear attractive in national drag so the uh, empire uh, has made empire had made it as cetric uh, like a legal domain to make uh, to permit the empire to appear attractive in a national drag to make a national consciousness for every empire wa uh, wants to uh, have this uh, a feel of this uh, unit relation relating themselves that's why they uh, propagated nationalism 20th century nationalism have as i have been arguing a profoundly modular character they can and they can and do draw on more than a century and a half of human experience and three earlier models of nationalism nationalist leaders are thus a position consciously to deploy civil and military educational systems modeled on official nationalism nationalism selections party organizations and cultural celebrations modeled on the popular nationalism of 19th century europe and the citizen republican uh, idea brought into the world by the americas what is defined here what is explained here is that this kind of nationalism uh, to other countries were taken uh, from the models modulars are taken from europe and by it was propagated by america american concept benedict anderson imagined the communities original spread of nationalism that is what the book uh, original book about nationalism if nationalism he says in that book that if nationalism in the rest of the world have to choose their imagined community from community from certain modular forms already made available to them by europe and america we accept the concept from europe and america what do they have left to imagine this objection is made because the nationalist imagination in, in asia africa are premised on a difference from not on an identity with western models of nationalism so the identity of asian and african concept of nationalism didn't get that much space to be accepted than the american and european thought of nationalism for this assertion to make sense the standard nationalist theory of nationalism was the nationalism as which sees its solely a political movement so we need to think about one thing that what nationalism we have uh, we we follow is only a political movement uh, we, we can't apply any divinity to that we can't apply any spirituality to that it's only a political movement the nationalism the feel of nationalism we have is only a part of a political movement beginning with an establishment of the indian national congress in 1885 after on a decade of preparation which in turn was built upon the reform movements of the previous five decades must be disbanded this standard theory of nationalist history necessarily converges with anderson's formulations what can we know from that passage is that so <coughs> what made a nationalism took uh, come in india is the establishment of uh, indian national congress that is what 1885 uh, after 1885 till 1947 most of the indians were having only a dream most of the indian fighters freedom fighters were uh, making one dream uh, that will come true that's uh, the emancipation from <coughs> british empire right liberty uh, independence we needed to get independence so that's why uh, nationalism was there in india so uh, a country uh, which was being subjected to uh, imperialism colonialization is the space of nationalism uh, that's why uh, commonwealth nations are having more uh, what we can call more uh, more powerful concept of nationalism 
This standard theory of nationalist history necessarily converges with Anderson's formulation. That is what we can understand from this concept. So what he is explaining here is that the nationalism or the concept of nation we hardly believe, we strongly support, we strongly uh, spiritualize is actually having what actually having a history that's in India after the establishment of uh, Indian National Congress. The man, the implications are many. For one, nationalism claims sovereignty in the spiritual domain. Why? Why it is a uh, true? That is what the question. Or uh, why? Uh, how can it be true? How can we? Uh, or how can we elucidate the point? What? I have told you this uh, nationalism is uh, not that much old. Anti colonial nationalism creates its own domain of sovereignty in the spiritual sphere of colonial society. Before it begins its political battle in material domain, in the material domain, the domain of the outside, of the economy, statecraft, science, and technology, the West is superior and must be emulated. But in spiritual domain, the inner domain which marks cultural identity, colonial distinctness must be uh, preserved. No distinctness must be preserved when everyone is becoming, becoming as a uh, nation. That's what it is said here. The implications are many. What are the points related to that? For one, nationalism claims sovereignty in the spiritual domain. It has a power in that spiritual domain. So while the initial phase of social reform period in India witnessed appeals to colonial authority to effect change in the later phase, in later phase, there was a strong resistance to interventions by the colonial state. This later phase, it is period, period of nationalism. This does not imply that the spiritual domain is left unchanged. It's in fact, here the nationalism launches its most powerful creative and historically significant project uh, to fashion a modern national culture that is nevertheless not western if the nation is an imagined community then this is where it's brought into being uh, so what does it imply <laughs> the concept of nationalism that we took from uh, european concept and in Europe, uh, the uh, the appealing in Europe, uh, we kind of see one thing that nationalism is this kind of st stronger in Europe. They had a policy, and they are not uh, involving any matter uh, that is fully related to political and social uh, social aspects of people. But what happens <coughs> in the countries like India? We consider nationalism as our religion. We may imagine that our nationalism uh, is that much year old and traditional, that much strong. That's not true <coughs> in the searching of Benedict Anderson that we can see. Who, that's why it is the article is also article of Partha Chatterjee is also titled as "Whose Nationalism? Whose Imagined Community? Who Who Does Have This Nationalism?" Some areas of spiritual domain in nationalism transforms will be examined with the illustration from Bangar. We can uh, see some other kind of movement, nationalized movement. But all this nationalized movement, nationalized, nationalized the movement means all this communal movement as a community uh, were not selected when we were forming uh, Indian, India as a nation. Considering the language, while the impact of print capitalism is unheralded, it does not imply a simple transposition of Europe patterns or standard development of the national language in the colonies. It is the colonial state that introduced the English language and commissions and commissions printed books in Bengali. Closely on the heels of such development, the bilingual elite through an institutional network of printing press, publishing houses, newspaper, magazine and literary societies tried to provide its mother tongue with the requisites of a language of a modern culture. So, <coughs> uh, when British came in India, came to uh, India to Bengal, there was Bengali, there were not Bengali publication. 
and people not people were not united so after the publications of books uh, periodicals in bengali language people started to read and they were forming as a modern culture while modern european languages and literature shaped critical discourses their conventions were considered inappropriate to judge bengali literary production for example in drama once again while modern european languages and literature shaped the critical discourses activities their conventions were considered inappropriate to judge bengali literary productions they started judging they started monitoring bengali literature literary production for example in drama it was not the conventions of shakespeare but those from sanskrit drama drama that would be uh, succeed on the calcutta stage mainstream public theater inspired by western conventions is clearly distinguished from folk theater as an another example considered novels bengali novelist preferred the direct recording of uh, living speech to the disciplined forms of authorial prose in an attempt to find an artistic truthfulness which made it necessary to escape as an often as often as possible the rigidities of prose what can we understand in this passage is that so people of india uh, uh, how the nationalism has affected us that is uh, see when we think about nationalism when we focusing on a national identity when we think uh, india uh, when our country as a one nation we uh, deliberately forget many of the small uh, cultural aspects small uh, <coughs> small uh, aspects of uh, our life that sort that happened in bengali so there were, though there were many indian dramas classic indian dramas are there to be staged to be staged on the theater but how did we give much importance to uh, the dramas of shakespeare that's that's what is the reason because shakespeare has said uh, shakespearean dramas as uh, shakespearean dramas belongs to that capitalist print capitalist concept but uh, the dramas of sanskrit were not having that that's it the assertion of the differences was most dramatic in the realm of family the criticism of indian tradition and the reliance on the agency of colonial masters in the early uh, reform period gave way to a rejection of outside interventions in the nationalist only the nation or nationalist only the nation it came to be argued could have the right to intervene in such an essential aspects of cultural identity as the family in the material domain nationalism begins by inserting itself into a new public sphere constituted by the process and forms of the modern it had to overcome the subordination arising out of the strategy of the rule of colonial difference the preservation of the uh, alienness of the ruling group which was pursued by the colonial state ironically nationalism had to do in this domain insisting insist on abolishing this rule of colonial differences over time the domain became more extensive and morphed into the post colonial state which in india at least was built on the idea of the modern liberal democratic state so india has to be uh, identified uh, addressed as a modern liberal democratic state we need to have a policy of liberal democracy we need not to focus on the democratic aspects or we may not to blindly follow the democracy i mean uh, we have a practice of liberal democracy but that liberalization is not possible when nationalism gets its power right but while the nationalist elite presided over a field over field constituted by the distinctions distinction between spiritual and <laughs> the material the post colonial state presides over the field constituted by the distinction between the private and the public the modern liberal democratic post colonial state in accordance with the liberal ideology seeks to protect the inviolability of private selves which means it has to remain 
indifferent to the concrete differences between private selves marked by race, language, religion, class, caste, so forth. Differences towards which nationalist elite could not remain indifferent. Uh, nationalist uh, concepts are indifferent to this class, caste, language, religion, race. So we are, we may be having a connection to this uh, language, religion, class, caste, etc. But when, how can be a person who belong to different culture can be one nation? That's what the question. So difference towards which nationalist elite could not remain indifferent. The result is that autonomous forms of imagination of the community were continue to be overwhelmed and swam swamped by the history of the post-colonial state. Here lies the root of our post-colonial misery. Not in our inability to think out new forms of the modern community, but in our surrender to the old forms of the modern state. That's what we can uh, see in uh, whose imagined community. So, uh, in short, what explained here it is that the nationalism, uh, the country like India, if we practice nationalism, what the problem is that we are modeling a concept of nationalism that started in the Western countries and that is not, uh, that is still not in use there, that concept of nationalism. So countries like India, how did uh, how could be how did we became a nation? That is because of the formation of Indian National Congress in the beginning. We were uh, exploited, we were looted by British, and to fight against the British, we we started a party. Then it became a, a concept of nation, and by the winning of independence, we became a more uh, we became a stronger uh, group. So that, that community became a nation. So today if we are focusing in nationalism more, that means it's an outdated concept. To be a, a people can be a single nation, people can be a single group, people can uh, follow, uh, people can uh, spread a single culture. That's not possible even in Europe, when in the case of India, that will never be possible because we have... Uh, Different kind of people, different kind of attitude, different kinds of language, culture, whatever it is. Then it should not be possible. And if it is possible, that is only an imagined one. Like in the beginning we said, when uh, the Olympics game comes, when the war games comes, when uh, World Cup football comes, we may be feeling that we belong to a particular country. Uh, and we feel that kind of uh, sense of nationalism. Otherwise, it's not uh, the that is what whose imagined community says.